Hello, friends, Through a Therapist Eyes podcast listeners. This is your co-host, Craig Graves, with today's short. Today, we're going to go back to almost close to the beginning, episode five on mindfulness. Uh, We talked about how mindfulness had hit the mainstream and what it means to be mindful, how to be more mindful. Chris even shares a little mindfulness exercise that you can do with a raisin believe it or not. So be sure to check that whole episode out if you haven't. Hopefully this is a good review. If you have heard that episode and maybe a little teaser, wet your whistle, if you will, if you haven't heard it. So I'm going to jump right in. Takes about eight minutes and um, I'll wrap up on the other side. So thinking about that, we get scattered feeling about the past, you know, reflecting on things or regretting things or resenting things. And then we get into the future and we worry about them or we try to recite them and plan for them. And our brains are all the time moving in one direction or the other. And very rarely do we get our minds on the moment, which is really what mindfulness is. True. Yeah. And we've talked about the, I think we talked about the monkey mind on a previous show. Right. But that's where, you know, your mind's like a monkey. It's just bouncing from one thing to the other. So I guess you're saying mindfulness is a way to kind of calm that monkey mind down, to kind of focus on one thing and stop thinking about the past or the present and just focus on where you are. Mindfulness.org describes it as the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and not overly reactive and or, or overwhelmed by what is going on around us. Me, my thoughts on it are... Basically, if you think of the word ness, it's a state, right? Laziness, loneliness. Mindfulness. Right? Yeah. State of mind being full. I mean, you know, if you think about the word. Yeah. Big question is, what is our mind full of? So, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> My mind can be full of a lot of stuff sometimes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and oftentimes it ain't very calming. So there's really, I think, a choice of what we fill our mind with and the concept in the therapy world is really about making your mind full of the moment. Okay. Making your mind full of the moment. So, you know, every squirrel catches a nut or every now and again, right? When I was a little kid, I actually, I don't know. I I guess I might've been accused of being a deep thinker when I was a kid. So every squirrel gets a nut. I think that I thought through concepts of time when I was a kid in a, in a really positive and unique way. And, and I still believe it today. Dude, I was like probably eight years old thinking about it. Um, but I think I nailed it, honestly. Um, so as a young, young boy growing up in Wheeling, West Virginia, developed a, a belief about time that the basic concept is the present is the most important. If you think about it, I think that stands true. When you think of your past, you know, you can learn from your, your failures and you can learn from your events. and you know, when you think of the future, you uh, very much, you know, plan for the future. And, and that, those are both important. But I, I was thinking as a kid, really, if you, if you focus too much on the past, you miss in the present the ability to change or adjust or, you know, grow from it. And then if you focus too much on the future, you miss the opportunity in the present to guide it or create the future, right? Yeah, that's true. Present seems to be, as a kid to me, and still to me as an adult, Present being the most important. So you developed that thought as a child? I know, that's weird, really? isn't it? You're a weird dude, man. I mean, dang. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, we, 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 we really are really just trying to, to get fully present in the moment. Um, you know, I was curious what you thought about that in, in your martial arts time, you know, when you're out rolling around. And I, I, I have, I don't know much about martial arts. I've always been interested in it. But to me, that's a big part of, whatever martial arts discipline you know you come across my impression is that in dojos and in whichever disciplines it might be that's a perfect example of mindfulness i'm thinking what's your training teach you about that what do they talk about when it comes to that either i mean you're in jiu-jitsu yeah jiu-jitsu is really where i've been training and uh i'm not sure that we specifically talk about um mindfulness or being in the present but you know i do know and i mentioned this on a past show too that you know a lot of the focus is on the breath you know focusing on the breath and not thinking about 
I mean, you have to react and and and, and be ready for the next uh, for the next move or plan of attack or defense, if you will. So you're really, you know, you're really focused on what's happening right then and there. You know, what's the next opportunity or um, you know, how do you attack your opponent in a way to uh, to submit or win the match? And you really have to be focused on the here and now in order to do that thing. Imagine it wouldn't work very well if you're focused on something else when you're on the match. Very true, you know, very true. And um, that, that's kind of where, at least in my mind, I'm not the expert martial artist. I've only been at it for about a year. But that's kind of what you know, I would say about that. Yeah, I, I, that to me is exactly what we're talking about. It really is. I mean, when you're, when you're working out or when you're doing something, if you're drifting off in your thoughts and stuff, which we usually do often, you're really not giving 100% on that match. Right, right. And you're probably you're not going to get win. beat. Yeah. You're going to get crushed. Yeah. Because it takes a split second to, I don't know, lose a body position or whatever. Yes. It, it can happen so fast, and they're in a chokehold, and you're done. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it takes, you know, those athletes, I mean, they have an intense, intense pressure on that moment, nothing but that moment. It, it's, it's impressive to me when you look at all of athletes. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's what we're trying to do in, you know, in regular life. Uh, be, be fully in the moment. And, and th- th- because it doesn't come naturally, you know, what, uh, what we do is try to teach that skill. Is mindfulness a skill, maybe? I would say, yeah. I'd say it is, definitely. Because it doesn't come naturally no, to me. it doesn't come. And, you know, when I've, when I've done meditation and yoga and, and things like that in the past, it's called a practice. There you go. Because you're practicing those things, with, you know, and, you're, and, and, and that's all mind practice. You see a common theme in a lot of the ways I look at mental health factors is a purposeful intention to manage what it is that you're going through at any given point. Mm-hmm. And I think that's huge. It's not sitting back just letting things happen. Mindfulness doesn't, I don't know, can we say that mindfulness doesn't naturally occur? I never really thought of that, but. I don't think, in my opinion, and you're the, again, you're the, the, the expert here, but I would say mindfulness does not naturally occur. I mean, I think people are constantly bombarded by thoughts and information and, you know, and and you really have to work at calming the mind down, turning off the TV, turning off the smartphone, or putting it away, something, in order just to weed out all the noise, because it's a constant bombardment of, of information in today's world. Thinking about what's going to happen, thinking about how am I going to deal with what's going to happen. Absolutely. Thinking know. about what happened, and oh my gosh. And Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, myself included sometimes, are so focused on what could happen. The next big thing. Yeah, and it may never happen. You know, and I think a lot of our, our news outlets and media and those kind of things focus on what might happen, you know? And, if I had uh, a penny for things, every time I thought of something that might happen in my life, yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I'd be yeah, wealthy. Absolutely. Massive money there. Yeah, so I, I think that's right. I think it is. I, 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 see it, I see it as a skill that you develop. And, uh, you know, they talk about mindfulness training. That's kind of what it's really about. And there's lots of demonstrations, uh, you know, of how to be mindful. I think really in anything, mindfulness activities, they will teach and train using all sorts of things. So I, Lots of good stuff in there, folks. Chris's kid, uh, childhood weirdness. I mean, who thinks about the most important time being the present when they're a young kid, you know, I don't know. Only, only Gazdick, I guess. Um, also too interesting question is what is your mind full of? I guess the answer to that is what you put in it. Um, interesting things in there. One of the big things is focus on the present moment. We spend a lot of time worrying about what happened in the past, what's going to happen in the future. But being more mindful allows us to be more present. And that episode five, I would, I would highly recommend you go listen to it because I believe that being mindful and being able to see things in your mind and realize where your mind's going is a big key to mental health. And I'm not a mental health professional. I'm just the co-host of the show. But that's my opinion, and that has helped me tremendously. I've been doing a meditation practice now for probably a good five years, 
And, um, you know, that's helped me tremendously to be able to slow things down and to see things in the present moment. And I would encourage you to do the same. There's lots of apps out there you can use for mindfulness, but I would encourage you to go out and do some research and read up on mindfulness.org. I think Chris mentioned on that little short and um, work on becoming more mindful. Okay. Love to hear your comments and your feedback. Contact at therapistize.com. Or you can go to the website and click on the Contact Us link and contact us there. Obviously, Facebook, Messenger, Facebook, you can comment on the post or right on our wall. And probably Chris would be the one to respond to you, but that would be a way to give us some feedback there too. We appreciate that. One last thing before we go, wholefamilyproducts.com. That's a good way for you to support our show. We have worked out um, a partnership with the guys or gals at uh, Whole Family Products. And if you go to our website and click on the little graphic, the Whole Family Products graphic, and then you purchase on their website, then Chris and I will get a, um, a commission, if you will. And they have a lot of great products, anti-aging, body and spa products, natural hormone creams, nat- nutritional supplements weight loss and sports nutrition, um, different health creams, CBD oil. We did a show on CBD, and they've got many options uh, or many CBD products out there. 126 products, I think, in in total. But the important thing to remember is go to our website, therapistize.com and click on the link there. Okay? Hope this helps, guys, and Chris and I will be talking to you soon. Thanks.